everyone, welcome back to another video. I really hope you had an enjoyable holiday. And as we kind of prepare for the new year, um, this was a really anticipated item that I ordered way back, I believe in like July or August. And uh, so I pre-ordered this and I'm hoping that this review can maybe help you all get excited about this style of keyboard. And this is a really slim, small form factor mechanical keyboard. So, and I think Keychron's done a really good job of tying you know, a more minimal aesthetic with functional mechanical switches. And so, you know, first let's just start off with doing a little bit of an unboxing, looking at what I've got here. Uh, we've got the palm rest. We've got the travel pouch that is like nice for carrying it since it is such a small keyboard. You could probably carry it on the go for a laptop. And then we've also got the Keychron K3 there on the side. So let's just kind of get into unboxing these things and then we can talk some specs and do a bit of a comparison later on in the video. So let's get into it. All right, so just right off the bat, this is a walnut palm rest, and I think this is actually really awesome. But one thing I am kind of bummed about is there's a large scratch. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right here, there's like a scratch that's probably an inch and a half long. So I don't know why that's there, but it is. So that's kind of scuffed up in other places as well, but nevertheless, still should be nice for resting my palm on since there's a little bit of a ledge on the keyboard. So let's just set that there. It's also got rubber feet on the bottom, which is really nice because when I set it down, it hardly slides, so. And then this is just a, this is the carrying case. Nothing else is in the box. We've got the Keychron badging right there. I will note that I got the K3 with the red switches and when we're talking about how it performs a little later, I'll kind of discuss why I decided to go with the red switches instead of some of the other kinds. Um, but again, that's just gonna also be personal preference because some people prefer certain kinds of switches depending upon how they feel, how they type, that sort of thing. All right, oh, it's got like an Apple style box. There we go. All right. This little instruction card just explains how to connect a cable or use the Bluetooth feature. You're able to set up three different devices for Bluetooth, so it just walks you through those. Got some extra keycaps. So I believe if you wanna swap out the orange button, you can with gray buttons. Additionally, they include some extra caps, I think so that you can toggle it between Windows or Mac. So, empty out this bag. These are the probably the rubber feet on the bottom of the keyboard. And then we've got... The keyboard backlight is controlled with this cap and it comes as an gray, but they key, include an orange one. An alt key, another alt key, and then this must be a version of their Windows button. Doesn't, let's see if that'll focus. Doesn't look like the Windows button, but. Then we've got a nice like paracord feeling nylon charging cable, USB-C to typical USB. So that's awesome. And then we've got this little tool here. I believe this is a switch cap removal tool. You use this to kind of wrap around a key cap and pull it off without doing like damage to the actual switch. So that's nice feature not every keyboard includes that and then the moment we've all been waiting for check that out wow it's so slim it's not quite as slim as like the magic keyboards but i think that the feeling of typing on it's going to be a lot better so if you see there there's like those red switches inside if you can see that red color So I chose the red switches. Wow, that feels really nice. 
I'm gonna have to get used to it a little bit though because it, it has a little less key travel than what I currently have. And also the uh, switches are, have a little bit more resistance than what I currently have. So I'll kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison to my current keyboard. Not that it will represent everybody's keyboard in your situation, but still just for comparison, it might be kind of helpful to see how this stacks up. So uh, that's basically all that was included in the box. Basically how this works then is if you're at your desk, you can set this down right in front of your keyboard here, just like this. And then you can, uh, you know, type rest. You got a nice palm rest. That sort of thing. And then you're like, okay, I'm all done typing. Let's head out. So then you grab this, take this, put it in here. Well, that's a little bit difficult to actually slide in there because of all the different keys. But then once you get it in, it's a pretty good fit actually. Yeah, not too loose. And it also doesn't like compress the keys but it still is like a tight fit. That's nice. So if you travel a lot and you like to use a mechanical keyboard over say the built-in keyboard on your laptop, this might be a really good option. So it can be wired or wireless. So if we just look at the top here, we got a USB-C and then this is the Bluetooth off cable switch. So, and then we've got the Windows, Android, Mac, iOS option. So it looks like if you toggle it to the far left, that's like Windows Android. And then if you toggle it to the far right, that's like Mac or iOS. So that's how you switch between the two. One other thing to just note is this like right down here in the bottom left, we've got the control option and command buttons, as well as over here, I think we've got the, uh, what is that called? Not the finder, but like the app screen on Apple um, Mac OS. And then we've got the, a function key and control key. So those are all typically, I think, buttons for Mac. I know for sure option and command are. That's why this Windows key and Alt key are included because what you can do is you can switch those out so that it's like a normal PC. So you can put those keycaps in those locations and then it will switch your keyboard from a typical Mac keyboard to a Windows keyboard. Orange key, if you wanna swap out the top right from a gray to an orange, you can. It looks like that's what some people might do. So you've got some symmetry between the tops. I think I like the gray look better, so I'll probably remove this orange key. Actually, let's just test this tool out right now and see how it works. So I believe you just wrap it around just like this. Then you just pull up. Yep, super simple. So, and then on the bottom of the key cap, you've got this like little cross or X shape inside a circle. You just line that up with the switch and press down hard so that it stays and then good to go. Also one other thing to note is the Alt key on this side is a little bit larger than on this side. And I think they do that just so that when you're typing, typically you use your like left pinky to press these three. Whereas this alt key isn't used as much. So I think they maybe space the keyboard out accordingly. That might also be just the default shape, but I think that's what they're trying to do here. My initial thoughts on this are actually really positive. I like this a lot. This sl slim palm rest is actually gonna be really nice and it matches up perfectly with the height. So I would definitely recommend getting this if you're going to get the keyboard. And then so far the keyboard feels amazing. Let's do some uh, typing tests just to see kind of how I uh, am able to type on this versus my old one, sort of the sound, that sort of thing. Let's briefly cover the specs of both keyboards before I do any sort of comparisons. So the K3 has a Gatoron Red mechanical switch, whereas my previous keyboard has the Romer G tactile switch. And this is a switch designed by Logitech. So the actuation force is about 50 grams on the K3, whereas the keyboard I have is 45 grams. So it is lightly, slightly more difficult to press the key on the K3. Additionally, uh, there's a little less key travel on the K3 keyboard compared to my old keyboard. And the nice thing about this new one is it has Bluetooth or wireless capabilities. 
whereas my previous keyboard did not. Uh, but there still is wired for both keyboards. So let's just kind of jump in. I'm going to do a typing test and then we'll just compare the sounds of the two key switches. Let's try a one minute test now with the K3. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's try the other keyboard. I definitely felt more comfortable typing on my old keyboard, but surprisingly my performance while typing was pretty similar, so I think it's just going to take a little bit of time to get used to that increased uh, force that I need to use while typing, but otherwise I like the performance. Let's do a little sound test just so that you guys can kind of compare and hear what the two sound like. In conclusion, I'm really excited about this keyboard and I think it's an awesome alternative to an Apple keyboard where there's more versatility and it definitely has that similar aesthetic while being still fully compatible with Windows 10. As far as choosing these accessories, I think the pouch is definitely optional and it really will depend on what your needs are when you travel. But the palm rest I really enjoy because I find that the built-in palm rest on a lot of larger mechanical keyboards, I get a lot of value out of those. So if you're similar in that stance to me, I think you'll really enjoy having that palm rest. I think that basically wraps this all up. So uh, if you enjoyed this review, please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more overlanding and tech content like this. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.